Hi there, this is Carl Irwin. Uh, I'm back. I've been gone for quite some time here on the channel. Uh, it's not that I've been completely gone. I've been busy uh, doing a whole lot of other things uh, since the uh, uh, pandemic sort of scenario has started. I've been extremely busy trying to modify uh, work situations and whatnot and uh, create content for that. I'm a public school teacher. I teach music uh, in uh, New York State, and uh, we've had to change quite a few things to make that work, and I've been doing 10 times more work than normal. Um, but also I have some other channels that I've been maintaining uh, also on YouTube that are unrelated to this particular topic. So I've been focusing on those over the past a year or so. But I'm back and uh, we're going to be looking at Q-Tractor today. And one thing I thought about was that my previous tutorials, I spent time uh, discussing kind of different ways to make uh, um, Q-Tractor function in a more... Uh, stable way by offboarding the MIDI data to separate uh, players. And uh, I've been working that way for quite some time. I found that QTractor in, in the build since then have has become quite a bit more stable. Um, and of course, whenever a, an unstable build gets pushed out, you can always revert back to a, a more stable one. So um, I'm now using QTractor with my plugins inside almost universally. So I'm going to start over here and I want to show you how to set up QTractor, particularly in a, an instrument sample environment. Uh, I want to show you how to set up QTractor uh, really from the ground up, from the very beginning. So just to give you a quick overview of what I'm using, um, I'm on Ubuntu Studio. The reason why I use Ubuntu Studio is because it has real-time kernel and all of the plugins and everything properly routed from the get-go once you load it in. So that's the reason why I use this as my base. Uh, I know there's other distributions out there that are uh, easily accessible to you that may be low system resource heavy or whatever. There's lots of reasons to use something else, but I use this for those reasons. So um, I also use uh, uh, SFZs more lately. I've been uh, using, I still use sound fonts and we'll be doing tutorials on sound fonts in the future and how to create sound fonts and use them well. Uh, but the benefit to using the SFZ format for sampling is that it has mod wheel capabilities to uh, crossfade between uh, your different velocity settings. So um, I use uh, the VSCO uh, Community Edition. So this is the Versilion Studios, uh, uh, the uh, Chamber Orchestra Community Edition, which is free. It uses uh, public domain samples as its uh, base. Uh, and specifically, I, I use this, uh, the vanilla SFZ version of this, but I also use uh, the VPO uh kind of version of this, which is a separate project. Um, Resilient Studios points to all these other projects that use the same sample sets as its foundation, and it points to uh, the Virtual Playing Orchestra, which is this website over here. Uh, this is a fantastic uh, sound library uh, that uses all of the best samples, I think, from the VSCO and kind of one-ups them with crossfade capabilities. Uh, there are what are called performance uh, sample sets in the uh, virtual playing orchestra that allows you to crossfade between uh, velocity settings. It's very useful, especially for strings and brass, where you have different kinds of uh, uh, timbre between different uh, velocity settings. So I use this as my uh, base uh, library for orchestral sounds, and, and then I augment these uh, libraries with various sound fonts. Some of them are custom and I make them myself. And then synthesizers and whatnot. Uh, also, I want to point you to this. Uh, SFZ uh, uh, is the uh, website, SFZ Tools. SFIZ Fizz, uh, is a SFZ player that is native to Linux. So up to this point, I had been using uh, other uh, Windows VSTs that I was using inside of Wine, inside of Carla, inside of QTractor, and we'll talk about that in a minute, uh, Carla. But uh, that I didn't like that. I didn't. I didn't like depending on Wine. I wanted to be have something that was um, stable and native. And uh, there is Linux Sampler, which is native, but it's not terribly stable, and it's kind of complex and convoluted to use, and doesn't have a very good graphic user interface. It's dependable 
and uh, under good development. So this came along in the past year, and I found it to be perfect. It uses uh, the virtual playing orchestra uh, samples, performance samples flawlessly using crossfade uh, without having to do any hacks to the samples. So um, that's what I have used. Uh, you can download this as a VST. I find that the VST is a little bit more stable than the LV2 plugin, uh, but you do have both uh, to use. Then uh, for additional plugins, I depend heavily on the CAF Studio Gear plugins uh, for audio uh, um, effects. Uh, particularly the uh, uh, equalization effects and the filter effects, and also uh, I like to use the reverb effects uh, from the CAF Studio gear. Uh, also on reverb, I had been using a convolution re reverb called Clang Falter that you can get on the uh, KX Studio uh, repositories. By the way, I run the KX Studio uh, repositories on my system too. That gives me just better access to better development and, and, and better uh, compiled versions of plugins and applications. Um, but uh, on there you can find the Clang Falter VST and LV2 convolution reverb where you can use impulse files for convolution reverb. Um, I, I've i resorted to that, but it is a little unstable and a little system resource heavy, and I've actually gone back to these good old uh, TAP plugins, Tom's Audio Processing Plugins. These are uh, exist in LADSPA, but they also have an LV2 port that you can get on the KX Studio website. So I've been using the TAP plugins and the Reverb, the TAP Reverberator, which is not a convolution reverberator, but has really, really good modeling uh, and emulates convolution reverb very well and refers to its presets by spaces, by spaces that are, uh, you know, that you can conceive of uh, um, uh, visually and audibly. Uh, and then it also gives you the proper settings for tail and for release that you can apply. Um, there are some workarounds that you have to do with this uh, plugin set uh, that I'll talk about on another tutorial, but I do use these as well. So this is the basic setup that I'm using. And then, of course, QTractor, and I use the latest version of QTractor. So let's take a look now at QTractor. So once you open up QTractor, uh, this is uh, what you will see. Uh, and I like to set my mixer on the bottom, and then I uh, just resize my windows. Uh, I also set my color scheme to match Carla because I use Carla kind of integrated with this. So uh, with all of that said, here's how you get started. First, you're going to add a track, and this is for sampling. So this is on a, a orchestral mock-up or sampler sort of set. And uh, we want this to be a MIDI track. I'm going to call this uh, Brass. And uh, what we're going to do is use get my caps lock off. We're going to use the uh, Virtual Playing Orchestra performance uh, samples for this so I can show you just what, what it can do. Uh, we want this to be set to channel 1. Typically the way I work using Carla, and I'll show you in a second what I mean by that, but Carla as my instrument and my plugin environment, I usually set all of my MIDI channels to 1 because I'm not going to be using the bank output. Now, if you're using an SF, uh, an SF2 player, uh, you're going to want to make sure that you use separate MIDI channels so that you can use your bank uh, and programming system here to choose and key switch between different sounds. Uh, but I typically work with SFC, so I don't usually mess with uh, this. I work with single samples at a time. So I set it to one, and uh, I like for color scheme. This is important. Some people would say this is irrelevant, but for color scheming, I don't like the pastel -y kinds of colors that are typical to uh, the, or, or I should say, uh, um, default to Q Tractor. So I have these primary colors that I've just made it, made down here. I set a dark one, a little bit muted tone, uh, and then uh, and then for the second one, I just select that same color, move it all the way up to the top color. And then that gives me just a little bit easier, I think, palette to work with. It's a little easier on my eyes and doesn't remind me of the 1990s uh, so much. So um, you can customize Q Tractor immensely uh, to make it suit your visual desires. Uh, so anyway, we have our track. Let's uh, put an instrument on it. Uh, I'm going to load in down here a plugin, and I'm going to load in Carla. So I have Carla installed, and I'm going to use a Carla rack. And the reason why I do this is because I have found that Carla is extremely stable in QTractor. 
Um, it adds a little bit of system resources to it, but it's very, very stable. You have a less likelihood of crashing if you're putting your plugins inside of Carla and putting Carla inside of your tracks and Q-Tractor. When Q-Tractor starts differentiating between a lot of different plugins, it starts to have some uh, uh, moments where it will fail. So this is how I typically work uh, with it. Um, we're going to add to this a, uh, a plugin, and I've also... Uh, incorporated in here my favorites. I've identified my favorite plugins. I'm going to use SFIZ, uh, SFIZ uh, which is developed by Paul Ferrand, and this is the VST version of it. And once I go in here, I'll open up the graphic user interface. It's pretty simple. Um, I'm going to select by clicking on the open space here a, um, a SFZ file. So I have mine all categorized down here. Virtual Playing Orchestra, and I'm going to use the uh, brass, and we'll go with this here, and I think it's this one here. So all brass section performance. This performance designation means that it will use the mod wheel to uh, move between velocity settings. So we'll set that one in, and then I can close this out, and uh, that's all I need. So I have uh, my instrument encapsulated inside of that Carla rack. And now I should be able to play my sound coming through and you should hear that. Okay, so I'm playing the sound now. Listen what happens if I move the mod wheel. So you can see as I move my mod wheel up and down, it will uh, go between the velocity settings. Now, this doesn't sound very good. It sounds extremely dry. These are just very basic samples with accent and everything and that mod wheel function. Let's make the sound better. So I'm gonna come up here to view and I'll go to buses and we'll select an audio bus. And I'm going, this is how I set things up. I'm gonna uh, create one called mix down. We'll hit create. Then I'm gonna make another one and I'm gonna call this brass. Uh, so this is for my brass section, I'll create that. And then we'll hit close. Now what I want to do is I want to route my instrument over here and I'll right button click in the space below my plugin. And under audio, I'm going to select brass and it's going to send this instrument to my brass bus over here. I'm going to turn on monitoring uh, over here. And one thing I want to do, you hear my voice showed up here. I want to make sure I turn off my capture for these because I'm recording right now. So uh, in a Q tractor under brass, so I'm going to I'm going to disable these cuz I don't want my microphone to come through. That's awful annoying. So by default, uh it will automatically connect your microphone input to any bus that you make. So just be aware of that if you're dealing with a micro. Typically, I turn off my microphone in my uh sound settings, my sound card settings so that I don't have to worry about this at all. But now we have our instrument coming through and we can turn on monitoring for both of these tracks so that my instrument will feed then down through these if I route them. So on my brass output, I'm going to uh, disconnect its playback to the system and I'm going to connect uh, my brass output to the mix down. So once you route this, this will save in your session and you can make a template, of course, with all of these uh, uh, bus settings if you choose. So then I'm going to change my mix down output to the master output. So now we have master here and I want to disable that one to the top. So I have left and right channels coming out. So now my routing will feed down through these buses. So what I need to do then is add some effects. So let's start with just a room reverb effect. Uh, and to do this, I like to use the tap reverberator. Now, uh, this is a little bit tricky. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a Carla Rack plugin again. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add a tap reverberator plugin. So I'll type in tap. I'm going to come down here to tap reverberator. And we'll select this here, and I'll make sure I set it to my favorites. Now, in the tap reverberator, we have a bit of a problem is in that it doesn't tell us what these reverb types are. On a later uh, tutorial, I'm going to show you a way that you can set this up so that you have this information readily available to you. I know that I want to set this to 13, which is a small hall, small room. I'm going to set this, uh, re this is the decay amount, down to just two seconds. And now if I play 
my instrument, I should get a little bit of, I have to enable it here on my Carla rack. You'll hear that I have some reverb now. And it's kind of a dryish reverb. There's a little bit of a uh, fall off to it, but it doesn't fall off very long. It sounds like the instruments are now in space. Okay. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my uh, mix down track over here. I'm going to add another Carla plugin. And in this one, I'm going to add another reverb. I'm going to add, uh, turn on my favorites here. I'm going to add the calf reverb set to large at a 1.5 second a delay. This is going to be the finish reverb that is applied to all of my buses. See, I can keep making buses over here for different instrument sections that have different uh, 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 reverb and equalization techniques set up for each one of those sections to make it sound like they're in different parts of a room. So now when I play this, I, I sound like it sounds like it's in a room, but it sounds like it's in a large room and there's an additional fall off that would be applied to all of my buses. Okay, so again, I can use that uh, uh, modulation wheel to get some interesting effects in there. And that's pretty much the basic setup that I use. I then add on a bunch of different instruments uh, here to make my orchestration. Uh, of course, to uh, record, you can record live by uh, arming the uh, instrument and then arming uh, for record. You'd have to name your file and then hit play and you can record that way. We'll look at that on another uh, tutorial, but this is just the basic setup to get instruments uh, set up for orchestral mock-up using SFC instruments and the available plugins that we have for Linux. So hopefully this is useful to you and uh, you, you find this beneficial to your projects and I wish you very happy mixing.